Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Ann. Good morning and Merry Christmas to each one of you. Uh, it's good to be gathered on the day we celebrate uh, Jesus' birth. Uh, we had to wait a little, uh, a little bit here to make sure we weren't missing uh, Joseph or a king or uh, Mary even, that we had all of our actors in our programs, but I think we're uh, ready to go. Uh, it's just a joy to celebrate Jesus' birth in different ways. We're looking forward to the uh, Sunday School Kids and leading us in part of that celebration. But as we gather in God's name, we receive his greeting. Friends, may the grace of Christ our Savior and the love of God our Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We're going to join in a song together, Angels from the Realms of Glory. Uh, Jerry, do we have the computer working yet? No, okay, so you've got to see if you can still use a songbook. It's our red one, uh, number 81, and we're singing just the first two stanzas. So uh, 81 of Sing a New, uh, Lift Up Your Hearts, uh, stanzas one and two, and let's stand together. seated. And uh, now at least we know that we can still work with the songbooks. That's a, that's a good thing. Uh, our Sunday school kids and program is going to lead us now in worship. Welcome. Welcome. Today we are going on a special journey, the journey to Bethlehem. But who will show us the way? The prophets. Prophets listen to God so they can show us the way. Isaiah was a prophet who listened and spoke the word of God. He said one day Messiah would be born. The Messiah would be like a light shining in the darkness. This is what Isaiah said. Those walking in darkness have seen a great light. Those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. This is the candle of the prophets. It reminds us that prophets like Isaiah can show us the way to Bethlehem. Let us enjoy the light of the prophets. I wonder how they knew it was God who spoke. I wonder if there are still any prophets today who can show us the way to Bethlehem. I wonder what the way to Bethlehem was like. Mary and Joseph are on the way to Bethlehem. 
They can show us the way. They have a secret. An angel came to them. Greetings. Do not, the Lord is with you. Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and be called the Son of the Most High. I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. Joseph, do not be... Be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. She will give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus, because he will save their people from their sins. This is the candle of the Holy Family. It reminds us not to be afraid, but to be trusting on the way to Bethlehem. Let us enjoy the light of the Holy Family. I wonder how Mary felt when the angel spoke to her. I wonder how Joseph felt. I wonder how they felt on the way to Bethlehem. Shepherds are also on the way to Bethlehem. They can show us the way. They have good news, for angels also came to them. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born. He'll, he is Christ the Lord. He will be assigned to you. You will find a baby wrapped in claws, lying in a manger. Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened. This is the candle of the shepherds. It reminds us of the good news. A Savior, the Son of God, is born. Let us enjoy the light of the shepherds. I wonder how the shepherds felt when an angel spoke to them. I wonder how they felt on the way to Bethlehem. The Magi are on the way to Bethlehem. They can show us the way. The Magi saw a special star in the sky. They follow the star to Bethlehem, bringing gifts for the newborn king. I bring a gift of gold for the newborn king. I bring a gift of frankincense for the newborn king. I bring a gift of myrrh for the newborn king. This is the candle of the Magi. It reminds us of God's gift of Christ, the newborn king. Let us enjoy the light of the Magi. I wonder how the Magi felt when they saw the special star for a king. I wonder how they knew the star was special when others just saw a star. I wonder why the Magi brought gifts. The prophets show us the way to Bethlehem. Mary and Joseph show us the way to Bethlehem. The shepherds show us the way to Bethlehem. The magi show us the way to Bethlehem. This is the journey that God calls each of us on, the journey that leads us to Jesus. Once we get on this road, we will never be the same again. And it all started with that journey to Bethlehem.
Well, those were some uh, rocking shepherds and angels and wise men there. Uh, Wonderful. Thanks, uh, kids. Uh, We're going to join our voices with theirs, and why don't we sing for this as well. It's uh, Infant Holy, Infant Lowly, another wonderful Christmas carol. Uh, We do have that uh, working on the overhead. Let's uh, stand together. seated. The Magi brought gifts to Jesus, and that was fitting. Uh, The Lord, the King of the universe, we're going to bring our offerings as well, and our offering this morning is for our Sunday school program. I'm just going to share a few uh, words of meditation this morning, but before that, let's uh, bow our heads in prayer. Father in heaven, speak now, for your servants are ready to listen. And may your word be our rule, your spirit our teacher, and your greater glory our supreme concern, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. My meditation is based on uh, John chapter 1, verse 14, a familiar uh, verse, perhaps some of us have memorized it. It's uh, John using kind of philosopher's Greek-oriented language, but it reads, and the word became flesh and made its dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, come from the Father, 
full of grace and truth. So at the very beginning of this chapter, uh, John begins uh, kind of parallel to the creation account. In the beginning was the Word, and then he says, and the Word was God. And now here in verse 13, he adds, and the Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Wait, what? God become flesh? That is mind-boggling. Uh, suppose you are a dairy farmer and you are dedicated to milking a fine herd of cows. You, you may be fond of your cows. They provide a good living. Uh, you see them as generally um, agreeable and contented and cooperative. Uh, you might even give a special cow an endearing name, like Daisy. But would you ever become one of those cows, if you could, to improve their lot? Would you take on a cow's flesh, a cow's brains, a cow's stall, uh, a cow's future? I think not. And yet God's son was willing to become one of us. Uh, I, I know the story is familiar, but that ought to blow our minds. The word became flesh. The, the Greek word here is sarx, and it's a very earthy, uh, graphic type of word. It, it means bones and muscles and ligaments and limbs and skin and, and hair. It's mind-boggling that the Son of God took on our flesh. That, that in the flesh, Jesus became hungry. He grew thirsty and drank water from a well. He grew tired and slept in the boat. In the flesh, he was punched and flogged and pierced and crucified. The word became flesh. And the classic term for that is the incarnation. Uh, the incarnation is a key Christian doctrine and and every great creed includes it. Uh, in Christian Reformed circles, we have a marvelous contemporary confession. It's called, Our World Belongs to God. And it puts the incarnation elegantly. God has come among us in Jesus Christ. The eternal word became, become flesh. He is the long-awaited Savior, fully human, and fully divine, conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. That's an elegant statement of the Incarnation. And one last question, why? Why the Incarnation? Why was Jesus willing to make this mind-boggling move? And here's the simple answer. To save us to save us from our sins that deserved judgment and to grant us eternal life. And that's why the angel announced, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today, in the town of David, a Savior, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. Jesus loved us so much that he was willing to become one of us to save us. And that's why we come. That's why we worship. That's why we love Jesus. Let's pray a moment together. Jesus, we've grown familiar with the Christmas story, and in some sense we, we lose a sense of wonder and how mind-boggling uh, it was that you, the eternal word, would become flesh, one of us. It, it, it 
it's just astounding, something that we could never imagine doing with a creature, with an animal, if, if we had the option. So we worship you for this, for such love that led you to come to be our Savior. And Lord, we know that in turn we need to respond, we need to receive you as our Savior. And if there's anyone here who's just been sort of coming to ch church out of custom, out of habit, but has never received you into their hearts and lives, pray that today would be that occasion where they would marvel at uh, your great love to become one of us and uh, would choose to receive you as Savior. Lord, help us to live in your love every day. Help us to live lives of gratitude for this incredible gift that you've given. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. We uh, selected uh, another carol to respond to the meditation. It's Hark the Herald Angels Sing. I'm pulling out the songbook because I want to read uh, verse 2 uh, with you that really expresses the incarnation so well. Christ, by highest heaven adored, Christ the everlasting Lord, late in time behold him come, offspring of the virgin's womb, veiled in flesh the Godhead see, hail the incarnate deity, pleased as man with us to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel. So let's stand and join in this uh, great carol together. close with uh, God's blessing on us for this day, for this week uh, ahead. Uh, we'll uh, finish then with uh, Glory to God, a classic tradition here, and then do want to invite everyone to uh, join in a time of fellowship um, after the service. So brothers and sisters, as we go from here, God's blessing to you. Now may God the Father, who sent his only Son into the world, and may God the Son, who took on our flesh, 
And may God, the Holy Spirit, who makes us his temple, may this triune God bless you and keep you in everything you do. And all God's people said, Amen.